Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Kendra and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm sharing five fun fold cards that I made with the December of 2023 Crafty Courtyard kit called Bookworm. I'm using the sketches from my current quarterly card challenge number 12 and I'm turning five of these sketches into fun fold cards so I'll be modifying the measurements a bit from what's shown on the sketches. I recently shared an unboxing video that shows all of the contents of this kit so if you missed that, it's linked above, but here's a brief look at what all is included. If you're not familiar with the Crafty Courtyard kits, they're one of the monthly subscription products available from Pink and Main. The base price is only $34.99 plus shipping, which is based on your location, and they usually ship around the 15th of the month, but you can still purchase the kits until they sell out. What's great about being a subscriber to any of the monthly subscription products is that you receive 15% off of all products in the store anytime you shop, as long as you're an active subscriber. So it's definitely worth it to sign up. If you'd like to subscribe, I'll have a link in the description box. This is an affiliate link, which means if you make a purchase, I earn a small commission at no extra cost to you, and this helps to support my work. As I mentioned before, I'm using Challenge 12 to make these cards. The printable includes cutting guides for six sheets of pattern paper and 15 card sketches with instructions. Now, if you're not familiar with my challenges, I'll link a video in the description box so you can get all of the details. But these are the cutting guides and the papers that I'm selecting from this paper pad to assign to each of the six papers A through F. Now, I love that these are double sided because if I don't like two of the patterns together, I know I can always flip it over but I chose all six of the papers with the polka dots on one side because I know that those will go together no matter what. And I just want to quickly point out a few things on the cutting guides that are really helpful. There's scissors shown to indicate which line should be cut first, and there's arrows on each of the pieces to show which way the piece will be facing. And that's helpful to know if you have directional patterns that need to face a certain way. And there's also numbers for each of the pieces which indicate which sketch number that it goes with. Now off camera, I cut each of my papers according to the cutting guides. And I also cut my layers and card bases from the colored cardstock in the kit. And since these cards will be fun fold cards, I've adjusted some of the measurements a bit. And I'll explain that as I show putting together the cards. I've sorted all of these pieces into these cellophane bags to keep everything organized. I used to use smaller bags, but I decided to switch up to bigger ones since some of my stamp sets or papers wouldn't fit in those smaller ones, and I really like these. But anyway, these are ready to go except for the focal point and the sentiment, so that's what I'm going to do first. I'm using my Misty Stamping Platform, and I've placed a half sheet of Express It Blending cardstock inside since it's great for use with Copic markers. And I've laid out all of the stamps, spacing them out so that I can use the coordinating dies on top to cut those out when I'm done. But I'm using the Pink and Main Asphalt ink, and I love that it has this handle that you can use to apply the ink. This comes with the ink bundle. I'm applying pressure with my Air Hockey Table Pusher, and since these are new stamps, they still have a little bit of that sticky coating on them, so I'm just stamping it a few times to make sure that it has a nice crisp image. Next, I selected Copic markers that match the colors of the kit to color in my images. And I will list each of the colors that I used in the description as well. I'm only going to color a few of these images on camera to save some time. But after co coloring all of these, I took the coordinating dies and I taped them down onto the images using some mint low tack tape. And I've shared this tip before, but in case you're not aware, you can keep the dies taped on top of your first half sheet of images and use it as a template for the other sheets if you're using a misty stamping platform. That way you can stamp more images and then add the next sheet behind the ones that are already out and you don't have to keep attaching the dies with the tape. But after running this through my die cut machine, I carefully removed the die cuts trying to keep the dies stuck down in place so that all I have to do is line up the next half sheet of stamped images behind it. Okay, so let's get to putting together these cards. For this first one, I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel in the barbershop blue cardstock and a four by five and a quarter inch panel in the tan brownstone color. And this fun fold will have a smaller card on top of these two panels. And I decided to use the stencil from the kit and I'm using some pink and main embossing and watermark ink. 
and I'm applying it directly on top of the stencil onto the tan card panel. And I'm using the sticky part of the insert piece of my stamp wheel to hold the panel in place and to also hold the stencil. And I haven't used this much, but this is one of the main reasons that I bought it because it works great with stencils. But basically this watermark ink is just going to put the stencil pattern onto this panel and it will be a slightly darker tan color. The measurement for the smaller card is four by five and a half inches. And I scored this in half at two and three quarter inches. And then I also cut out a white insert to go inside of that that's a quarter inch smaller. I cut the end of that skinny strip at an angle and then next I glued everything down. I cut a two inch circle out of brown stone and a one and three quarter inch circle out of the coffee shop, uh, the brown color. And then for the image, I'm using the books with the cat on top. And then as for the sentiment, I'm using a stitched banner die to cut out the sentiment that says, sorry, I'm booked for the weekend. And I think that's super cute. But I popped the sentiment up with some foam tape and then I finished off the card with some small gold enamel dots. For the second card, I'm sharing a landscape gatefold card with a belly band. I used the brown coffee shop cardstock and it was cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches and then scored at two and three quarter inches from each end. And this will need a white panel glued to the inside, but I'll just do that later. But I have a one and three quarter inch strip in that middle school blue that's 11 inches in length. And then I've wrapped it around the, the long end of the card for the belly band. And I know it's not quite long enough to meet in the middle, but I'm going to hide that between some of these layers for the, with the other pieces. So I glued the striped pattern across the front. And then I'm going to glue the three and a quarter inch square layer to the back side of this strip. And then I'm placing the three inch square pattern piece on top. And to keep it level, I added a couple of scrap pieces to the back of that pattern paper piece. And then for the image, I'm using the stack of books with the coffee cup on top. And then I cut the sentiment into a strip to go below that that says just one more chapter. And then to finish off the card, I added three dots to the top right hand corner, three of those gold enamel dots. And I did this on the square instead of putting it on the card base because I want the belly band to be able to slide freely without getting caught on anything. And this, uh, this pretty much finishes up card number two using sketch four. For card three, I'm creating a barn door fold using sketch 10. So for the card base, I took a half sheet of the on the green cardstock that measures five and a half by eight and a half. And I cut two inches off of one of the ends. The inside panel measures four by five and a quarter. And I'm using the same brownstone color on the front as well. And that piece measures four by three and a quarter so that it can be a layer for that three and three quarter by three inch polka dot pattern paper piece. And I'm using a paper punch to cut off the end of the one and a half inch piece to make it a banner. And then for the image, I'm using the books with the shelf and the sentiment that says just a note to say hello. I decided against using the green layer behind the image that I originally planned to use that was shown on the sketch. But um, I ended up cutting out the sentiment with a small rectangle stitch die from a previous crafty courtyard kit. And again, I added a few gold enamel dots to finish off the card. For the fourth card, I'm using sketch 13 to make a top fold card with a flap. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel from that middle school blue cardstock. And for the top folding part, I'm using one of the white sheets of ice rink cardstock that measures three and a half by 11 inches. And it's scored at five and a half inches. I really love the patterns on both sides of the paper, especially the plaid, but I didn't want them to clash. So I just decided to go with the polka dot patterns. And for the strip that holds the circle piece for the flap, I used a three quarter inch strip that was eight and a half inches long. And this is gonna be glued behind that white card base on the top of the panel. And I scored this at four inches and then I realized that I needed to cut off 
half of an inch so that it doesn't hang over the edge of the card. But I have a two and a half inch circle from the middle school blue cardstock that will go on the end of the flat piece. And I used that same paper punch to cut out each of the strips into banners. And then I glued everything down. And I decided to cut the front part of the card base below that those banner pieces. Because I didn't really like the white that was showing. So I'm just using my Fiskars Spring Assist scissors to cut along the bottom there. Even though you still see white from the back of the card base, I like that the front part is shaped a little bit. And then next I added some thin gold stickers along the edges of each of the banners. And then for the image on this card, I used the open book with the flowers for on top of the circle. And since I colored the flowers in orange, I wanted to pull in more of that color. So I cut a smaller one and three quarter inch circle out of that wildflowers cardstock. And then for the sentiment, I wanted it to go below the book. So to make it not hang off the sides of the circle, I used the pencil to mark where it needed to be cut so I could line up the pencil marks in my paper punch. And then I popped this up with some foam tape. And then after gluing all of the pieces, I added another two and a half inch circle to the back to hide the end of that strip. And then to finish off the card, I added three gold enamel dots on the strip. And this is card number four using sketch 13. And for the final card, number five, I'm using sketch number 15 to make another center top fold card with a flap, except this one is landscape. So I'm starting with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch panel in the wildflowers color and the plaid panel that measures four by five and a quarter. The strip measures one and a half by 11 and I've scored it at five and a half. And this will be for the flap. And then for the top folding card, I used white ice rink cardstock to measure three and a quarter by six and a half. And I scored that at three and a quarter. I also cut two quarter inch strips from green cardstock. And for the image on the front, I used the girl holding the book and I'm going to have her elbows hanging over the flap. And then I decided to stamp the sentiment, sorry, I'm booked for the weekend directly onto the small card base over on the right. And I glued my pieces down and I almost forgot to tuck the flap behind the pattern paper piece, but luckily I caught it in time. And then I glued on the card base and the other pieces. And I only added glue to the girl's elbows so that she would be attached to the flap. And since the back side will show and you can see the Copic marker through the die cut, I cut another piece to glue onto the back and I marked with a pencil so that I would know where to put the glue. And then for the white space below the bottom green strip, I decided to put the open book image there with the hot air balloons coming out. And then that way it's hidden behind the flap. And then to finish off the card, I added three gold enamel dots on the right as shown on the sketch. I just didn't add any to the top left corner because the girl's head is in the way. And this is card number five. I really like all of them, but you'll have to let me know which one is your favorite down in the comment section below. But here's one more look at the five fun fold cards that I made with the December of 2023 Crafty Courtyard kit called Bookworm. I really hope you like my cards. If you did, I'd love it if you would click the thumbs up button. I hope this inspires you to get creative and think outside the box when using a sketch. See if you can make any of the elements a smaller card and put it on a panel instead of a card base. Or you can add a flap for any of the pieces that go all the way across. And don't forget if you want to subscribe to the Pink and Main Crafty Courtyard Kits, you can click on my link below in the description box. You can sign up through the end of the month as long as there are still kits available and they don't sell out. But I hope you'll subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I really appreciate you watching this video. And I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.